Hello everyone and welcome back to another Rails tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about using multiple databases. So we're going to be creating a uh, like a primary database, a replica of the primary for that type of redundancy, and we'll be creating a secondary database. So the main database will have all of our posts and the secondary one will have all of our tweets, I guess. Uh, so to get started, I just have a completely blank Rails app. It was just generating as I was talking. And then we'll just go ahead and we'll do a Rails G controller pages home. So we have a home page to work with for the sake of our sanity. We'll do a code dot so I don't forget to do this because I always seem to forget to open up VS code when I do this. And then once that's done, we can come into here and we can do a Rails S to start the server. And then we have our database.yaml file here. Uh, the only other thing we have to do is in our config routes.rb. Uh, is set this git to a root and this slash to a hash so that we at least have a root to our application. Go ahead and refresh. And this should hopefully take us to our home page and then I'll zoom in so you can actually read it. Okay, so basic idea is you're gonna have your blocks for your dev, your test and your production. You are then going to uh, come in here and change this to a primary and then you can tab this over. So the basic way you're gonna do this is every time you have another database, I think the documentation, the example was like you have an animals database, but to me that's a little bit weird because uh, like I'm not making dogs, I guess. So what we'll do here is we'll just say, this is a secondary database and this database will be called, um, let's see, database db slash secondary underscore dev dot SQLite three. And then we'll come to the main one and we'll just make this the uh, primary, primary underscore dev dot SQLite 3. So if we try to do this, we'll stop the server. Uh, we can then try to do a rails db colon create command just like this, and we should hopefully get an error. And the error we get is we couldn't create database with empty quotes. Now this is a not good error in my opinion. Uh, it's not complaining that it couldn't create a database without a name. Uh, and I spent a lot of time trying to figure out what this issue is. It's complaining that the primary and the secondary don't specify the adapter stuff up here in the default. So if we grab this and we move this into the primary block and we move it into the secondary block and then we get rid of this white space right here. Uh, if we now try to run this like this, if we do a rails db colon create, it'll tell us it created those databases. So the issue it's actually running into is that it doesn't have the adapter stuff set up. Let's just uh, set a non-advertiser friendly word. Um, so this is great. What happens if you want that redundancy of like a replica database? In that case, you would do a like primary replica and then you would pass in the default information again and then you have your db slash primary replica dev dot SQLite 3. So this is great if like I accidentally delete the primary database, we then have the replica to work off of. So this is how you do that level of redundancy. And then instead of having just your plain default adapter information, for example, uh, you might have this one set up to like an uh, AWS RDS instance that has like your your replica database. This would be your primary database that you connect to. And it's going out to different servers so that like if a, if the moon falls from orbit and it takes out one of their, their data centers, you have your, your replica still there to restore your user data. Uh, and hopefully your users weren't all under the moon's impact crater. Um, so this is good. The issue here is you, you're going to probably run into some problems where it's like, okay, well, what what migration modified the secondary database. And it's all gonna be inside of one migrate folder, right? Well, they actually have a solution for that too. And that is in your secondary uh, database here, you can actually specify the migrations paths. And you can say, this is gonna go to a folder called db slash, and then whatever you have here. So in this case, I'm gonna name this secondary migrations and I'll hit save. Now, if we try to do a Rails, uh, actually, it's not going to work. We have to, let me hit F11. We have to generate our uh, models so that we can actually use this. Now, the issue with generating the models is we need to like tell the application uh, which database it needs to use under certain circumstances. So let's say we try to create like a post model. The post model needs to use the primary database. Uh, does Rails automatically just assume everything is the primary database? Not necessarily. So if we come into our app and our models, 
we have our application right here. And our application record is set to a primary abstract class. Now, I don't know if this is the way to actually do it, but in the documentation, they tell you to use a self.abstract class equals true. So that's what we're gonna do here. Uh, and then we're going to do a, uh, I think it's a connects to the database. And then inside of this block, we're gonna specify the writing database, which is the primary database. And then for the reading database, we're gonna have a primary replica, of course. And then we're good to go here. Now, this will tell everything that inherits from this application record to use this database. And if you're familiar, every time you generate a model, like we can go ahead and do a Rails G uh, scaffold. And well, actually, let's do a Rails G model. We'll call it comment and we'll just give it like, I don't know, some, some text, right? We'll just run this and we'll delete it after. Um, this creates a comment.rb, which inherits from that application record. So everything is going to grab from this. It's going to say, okay, this is the primary database. We're good to go, right? Now let's do a Rails destroy comment and hopefully get rid of it. Rails uh, de delete comment. Gotcha. It is going to be a Rails D model comment, I think. There we go. Okay, so that works. So now we've gotten rid of that model and all the test stuff that's associated with it. Okay, so we have this. Now the question is, if we have like our tweets model, how do we tell it to use the secondary database? To do this, we have to essentially create another application record. So we'll right click, new file, and we're gonna call this one the secondary record.rb. Give it a class of secondary record. And then we can do the same thing here. Now this is going to inherit from the application record. It's going to not belong to it, uh, but we're gonna have a self.abstract class again, set it equal to true. And then we're gonna tell it to connect to a database, which is gonna be a writing of uh, secondary and a reading of a secondary as well, because we don't have a replica for the secondary database. You know, maybe this is the, the tweets of all the people we disagree with, so we don't really care if they get lost. We can just claim oopsie whoopsie, it's, it's gone and out the window. Okay, so now we have this secondary. Uh, when we create a, a model, we wanna tell it to you know, inherit from this. How do we do all of this without having to you know, actually do it? Uh, because we're very lazy people. Well, to start, we can do a Rails G scaffold for our posts and we can give it a title and a body of type text. And now we're gonna use the magic flag, which is gonna be a dash dash database flag that tells it to use the primary database. If we run this, We'll have that generate. We can then come down here to our DB and our migrate uh, folder. We have this migration here. Nothing changes inside of this migration. However, if we come into the uh, post right here, it's gonna in inherit from a primary record. The primary record is right here. The primary record is just set to read from a primary database. So this is generated for you. I believe the secondary would have also been generated for us and we can actually go ahead and try that real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. And then what we'll do is we'll say uh, Rails G scaffold tweet, give it some content of type text with a dash dash database of secondary. Go ahead and run that. It'll generate the migration. Now let's come into here, let's scroll down and right here we can see we have our DB, our migrate, and now we have our secondary migrations folder with all of our stuff for our other database. If we come up top here, we now have that secondary record generated for us, which has the, the writing database set to secondary. Let's just also give it a reading database of secondary, just so it's a bit more explicit. And then we can move these down to a new line uh, because I prefer to use vertical space instead of horizontal space because I'm, you know, not. Not the, the best Rails developer, I guess. Uh, but okay, you get the idea. We now have this. Let's go ahead and let's do a Rails uh, S to start our server. We can come over here, we can refresh. It's gonna tell us we have some migrations pending. So how do we run these migrations? Now, of course, if I click this button, everything's magically gonna work, right? Well, now we can just do a Rails DB colon migrate command, or we can tell it to only migrate, let's say our primary database, right? We do a Rails DB colon migrate that creates our posts. We run a Rails S, we restart our server. We have this, let's go over to our slash tweets. And it tells us there's no such table as a tweets table, right? So we have this right here. We have our migrations, but it's not throwing that error. Well, to do this, we can either do just a regular old DB migrate, or we can once again, tell it which one to, to migrate. So we'll tell it to migrate the secondary database. Now we can do another Rails S 
and we can go ahead and move to our tweets directory. So we'll come back to our, our root, the root of our application, go to pages, home. Inside of our home page, we'll do like two links. We'll say link to each of these, underscore two, each of these. Uh, this will be the post path. And then we'll do the same thing, but for the tweets path, right? Tweets and then tweets path. Something like that, come over here, refresh. We now have these links. So we come here, this will work just like a regular old uh, Rails app. Everything's being created. It's all running under the hood, just like that. Uh, and you'll notice that like we navigate through it just fine. We don't have to set anything else up. It's just magically been connected for everything. The only difference is now uh, you're gonna want to run those commands telling it which of the uh, like databases you're using for each of your migrations. Otherwise you'll have to manually manually stitch everything together. But like if we come into our tweet, we can see it's inheriting from the secondary record. If we come into our post, it's coming from our primary. All of that stuff's now being set up through all of those generators. Uh, there is a uh, documentation page you can look at that covers most of what I've talked about. It doesn't cover some of the weird nuances with the adapter stuff, uh, but I'll have a link to this in the video description as well. Uh, so if there's anything else you want to do, like one of the things I think they cover is setting up like a, a, a remote database where you aren't migrating it, you're just accessing it. Uh, so you might have like your friends set up a, I don't know, the, a videos database. You can post to the videos database, you can pull from the, or read from the videos database, uh, but you can't add a new thing to the videos database called shorts uh, and then start posting shorts there without your friend doing it for you. Or a better example is we have that like chat uh, GTP or whatever it was called. The oh, yeah, the open AI uh, model that everyone's been playing with recently. So the way that this works is you ask it, how do I connect to multiple databases in Rails? And it'll give you back some information. Um, one of the ways that they trained this data was through a uh, like a connection to the Twitter database, I guess, uh, which has just been temporarily potentially shut down uh, by Elon as he's running rampant over there. Um, and then they would access the Twitter database directly to uh, grab some data for like the, the test stuff. So like that's one example where you don't Twitter doesn't want, you know, this open AI person to, to add more migrations to the databases. They just want to like feed them the data or whatever. But yeah, hopefully this was interesting. Hopefully it was helpful. Uh, and hopefully I will see you in the next video.